patrons, you're back on the top of the charts. You're back on the top of the charts. Are you kidding me? Okay, well, listen, darling, Um, I've just been talking about you, how, you know, Morgan Wade is going to make an appearance during our chat coming up. Um, I'm glad to know I'm back on the top of the charts. I am going to call you after. I have actually a lot to tell you. So call me anytime. Oh, my God. Okay. Sarah Fraser, everyone, from the Sarah Fraser Show. Tune in. This was not planned. You always got to tell them legally if they're calling in that they're on the air. You can get in trouble. I learned from the best. I hear you're big in D.C., so, you know, I got to go with you, darling. Yeah, go with me. Go with me. You know, I'm very big in D.C., very big. You used to have a top radio show. Shout out to the team show, everybody that listened. Oh, my God. All right, I'll call you in, like, 45 minutes. Okay. Okay, bye. bye. Darlings, that was not planned. We had a guest appearance by Miss Frasia. Okay, anyone. Anyway, uh, we don't pay for Patreon guests. Fuck that, dudes. Um... Yeah. So anyway, uh, I don't believe that she just worked. So I'm team Heather on this one. You know, you just work for Jen and did errands and went all over town for free. Mind you, if you worked for her in the hopes of getting on the show, that's great. Now, let me tell you, that doesn't work. Remember when I used to hang out with like Jennifer Aiden? Oh, my God. I have Guys, this is what happens here. You, 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 you think of a story when you're telling another story. Well, I used to hang out with that Jennifer, and we were good friends. And I have to say, listen, I'm going to say it very clearly. I think she's a good girl. I do. I think she's a good girl. Look, do I think she dabbles? Not really in the finstas, but she's behind the scenes pulling the puppet strings too. Like, let's not hang it all on Marge. But remember, I was friends with Marge. Well, anyway, let me tell you something. Jennifer, Maj, all of them, they promise you, oh, you're going to be on R-H-O-N-J. Bullshit, okay? Listen, the definition of insanity, it's like when Tamrat says that she's, you know, not coming on my podcast and she's going to turn down the invite. Girl, you're turning down an invite from two years ago. No one invited you on this podcast. I'm not stupid. I refuse to live by the definition of insanity. And all of you should too. If people show you who they are, you listen. So like, don't you think when I started calling you Tamra and you're a rat, that scuddies, I just assumed you were never coming on here again. But that Jennifer Aiden and that Marge, oh, that Marge, all those, I mean, does Marge like, I mean, here's the thing. Do, do, do the Finsta phones sleep in the bed with her or does she at least put the Finsta phones next to the bed? And my other question for Marge is, do you ever get mixed up? Like, do you think you're on the first Finsta that you created and you're talking about this one and then she's got, she's got a lot to keep up. But the Marge and Miss Aiden always, oh, you're going to come on R.A. Joe and Jay and this and that. And you're not bringing me on no show. Give me a break. It's all bullshit. So my point is I don't hold anything against Monica. If she was, you know, working for Jen for free to try to get on the show. That's a valid on that's a valid thought process but girl that ain't gonna get you on the show but you got on the show because you got on the show but let me tell you anyone out there that's listening to this that's friends of a housewife that cuts a housewife's hair that's like the gay bff it's not happening no one's bringing you on the show okay these women care about these women each of them marge cares about marge the Grand Dom cares about the Grand Dom. Miss Jane cares about Miss Jane. So anyone out there who's friends with a housewife, blah, blah, whatever is being whispered in your ear, it's all bullshit. Okay? You want to get ahead? Guess what? Call me, pay my consulting fee, turn on a fucking mic and start a damn podcast and control the network, control the narrative and be real. That's why you guys listen to me because we don't do this bullshit. Now, Speaking of bullshit, we now get into how did Monica get on the show? So I'm sure you guys have seen this. So Monica says that she, and I love Andy's reaction, that she basically reached out to production and said, you know, your show sucks. Your show's boring. Your ratings suck. Your ratings are horrible. Your show's going to get canceled. There's nothing to your show. It's not going to survive. And you need me. Now, 
she didn't exactly lie if she did say that. Now, we know she hasn't said that. We're going to read what she actually said. But the show did suck, season three. The ratings sucked. No worse than Miami. Miami's great. No worse than Miami. No worse than Girls Trip, probably, for Roni. We don't know because it's on streaming. But no worse than the Roni reboot. The Roni reboot, Salt Lake. They all have around the same ratings. Miami actually has less, although my episode, my good friend Anna Kinkose says it's her episode. I love Anna. I think it's my episode, considering we made five appearances. That was the highest rated episode of RHOM all season. Can I take credit? Probably not. Will I take credit? Nah, but not a bad run for me. Um... So that's what Monica says. Now, here we have the actual, I'm sure you guys have seen this, what Monica actually said, because producers, you know, when you claim that the ratings suck and that you told them that their show sucks and Andy sucks and NBC is going to close down and long live ABC and The Bachelor and whatever else she said, they're like, we're going to explain what you actually said. She said, reaching out in regards to your casting call, we'd love more information on what needs to be done or how to move forward. This is a great Email, Miss Garcia. You you guys need a feisty, excommunicated Latina on the show. Immediately, I'm your girl, Monica F. It's a great, great email. I love the, on what needs to be done. It implies that she's the production dream, that she'll do what has to be done. How to move forward, great. You guys need a feisty, excommunicated Latina. Throw that in there. We love a diverse cast these days. Feisty, love that word. Excommunicated, what an interesting word. I would circle that and say, what do you mean? But that's the thing. As a casting director, you say, I want to know what the word excommunicated says. Oh, you work for Miss Shaw. Oh, you helped put Miss Shaw in jail. I mean, this is, this is, this is, it's a great email. You didn't say what you said, you said. You didn't tell them the ratings suck, Monica, dear. But so Monica lies like the rest of them, but not being fired. <clears throat> she had the affair with the brother-in-law. We know that. She's over it. She cried. She got re-communionized. <sighs> Angie K, look. I mean, Earth to Angie K. Is she even there? I don't know. I feel bad saying that I like Angie K, but... I forgot she was at the reunion. Then we get into this whole thing about Sean and the gay rumors. By the way, Sean was on this podcast. Go and listen. We talk all about the gay rumors. I love when Andy says bad leather to Heather and Lisa. That's the thing now, I think. I like it. Monica's single. She says she got divorced. Would love to see that during season five. I think we are going to see that during season five. I think we are going to see her dating. She is hot. She is young. Let's see it. Heather apparently ordered blankets.